Now, a few weeks back, you might remember Disney's new Snow White hit. The headlines for getting rid of seven dwarfs and replacing them with average-sized magical creatures. Piers and his guest at the time weren't happy. Behind the scenes pictures from Disney's live action remake of Snow White were leaked this weekend, and there appears to be a sizable problem. Where are the dwarfs? These are roles made for actors of my stature. I can't go out for the Harrison Ford or the George Clooney roles because that's not for me. Right. And now it's taken away. It, it, I don't feel that's right. Well, now that very same production has caused controversy after the actress who plays Snow White said this about Prince Charming. In an interview, Rachel Ziegler saying, the original cartoon came out in 1937, and very evidently so. There is a big focus on her love story with a guy literally stalking her. How weird. Well, we have a different approach to what a lot of people will assume is a love story because we cast a guy in the movie, but it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. Well, there has been inevitable backlash online, fans accusing Disney of inserting unnecessary feminism into classic fairy tales. Joining me now to debate this is the host of Tommy Laren is Fearless on Outkick, Tommy Laren. Hi, Tommy. And from New York, the brand marketing consumer expert and founder and chief soothsayer from Sooth, Ian Bear, once again. Great to see you both. Uh, Tommy, come on, give us your take on this. Uh, uh, Disney just messing with the classics? Yeah, they certainly are. Now listen, if Disney wants to make more woke films that tank at the box office, they are more than welcome to do that. But maybe think of an original idea. Maybe not destroy a classic from my childhood and put an actress in there that not only hates the plot and the storyline of the movie she's in, but also seemingly hates Snow White, the character herself. I mean, that's one interview clip that you read the quote from, but she's gone on to talk about this film numerous times, how she once thought Snow White was creepy. She doesn't like the prince. She thinks she should get paid more because she has to wear that dress. She should get paid for streaming for every hour she has to wear the dress. I mean, talk about biting the hand that feeds you. Not only are you being casted in a classic film to remake it, but you don't seemingly like your own character. So she comes off as an insufferable whiny brat. And that's why people are so annoyed beyond just them inserting feminism. I think we expect that at this point. But why do you have to mess with a classic, especially with someone who doesn't even seem to like her own character. Okay, interesting. I hear your take on her and the interviews she's giving and the type of sort of the way she's coming across. But you say that you're kind of used to feminism being inserted into Disney movies. Now, Ian, uh, it's a smart marketing move, isn't it? Well, uh, any move is a smart marketing move that resonates with the people who are putting revenue uh, against your product. Look, the reality is Disney has been... Uh, doing very inclusive casting for decades now. Go back to the 1980s, and that's really when they turned the corner and that formula of damsels in distress got replaced this, with these more heroic uh, feminine characters, beginning with Ariel back then, but certainly all the Disney princesses ever since have really been triumphant females. So it's not a shock to see Disney pivot from you know 19th century German source material <laughs> right. to something that they believe is going to resonate with with the audience. Uh, uh, of course, you know people will vote with their wallets. Right, uh, Tommy. 19th century German source material. Can you really blame Disney for wanting to court a modern audience, Gen Z and younger? These girls, they think differently, they act differently, they have dis different aspirations in life. Yeah, it's okay to modernize things, but if you have such an issue with the original fairy tale and the original storyline, maybe instead of remaking it, you just make a different movie. <laughs> I don't think that's too much to ask for. But furthermore, listen, you can have female characters that are empowered, that do great things, that are, that are heroines. I mean, that's fantastic. I don't think anybody has an issue with it. But you don't have to disparage men in the process. You don't have to call Prince Charming a stalker. You don't have to say that you could just eliminate him from the whole movie. I mean, there is a space where you can have strong females and strong males it's called the real world or you know at least some places it still exists maybe only here in nashville tennessee and others <laughs> but it's it's okay to do both and you don't have to make men seem emasculated and puny to make women seem strong and you don't have to eliminate them altogether as this actress has actually suggested well, OK, uh, Ian, what about the controversy that this film has received online? Do you, it's clearly not coming from the young women it's marketed at. In fact, it seems to be coming from a, a male demographic. 
Well, yeah. Well, I, I think it's interesting that there's been so much backlash where this is concerned, yet not really the same kind of backlash around the Barbie movie, which has certainly taken a different point of view. You know, most people who grew up with Barbie dolls, when you opened that package, it didn't immediately start speaking out against the patriarchy, <laughs> right? Yet, yet the Barbie movie we see today takes quite a feminist stance and a more inclusive stance than we've generally seen associated with the character. So, you know, this is Disney's intellectual property. They can do what they want with it. People uh, are going to choose to spend their money on it or not. It, it's it's not really a matter of of moral judgment. You know, entertainment and art is is created to be received and appreciated by an audience. And this is commercial art. This isn't to hang in a museum. Mm. It's going to succeed or fail on that merit. And the Barbie movie you brought up, of course, a really fast-grossing billion-dollar movie for a female director beating all expectations and all that controversy. Tom, I want to come back to you because you made a really good point there about strong men and strong women. Why do you have to crush one to have the other? And I was thinking about the James Bond franchise. You know, there's often this mooted idea that women will suddenly be stepping in to play Bond. We've obviously got a lot of female characters in that now. Do you think that's been to James Bond's detriment? Or do you think it's been a success the way they've modernised that? Uh, I think that the numbers will speak for themselves on that. Uh, and again, when you have a franchise that you have created around a James Bond character who is a strong male character, you don't need to go and then replace James Bond with a female. You can have other strong females. But what is this process now where it's like in order to be inclusive, you have to completely destroy storylines, completely destroy franchises? I don't believe in that. I don't think the consumers believe in that either. You know, there is a way to modernize things. There's a way to bring in inclusivity and diversity, but you don't have to completely destroy the concept in order to do that. And that's why, you know, going back to the Barbie movie, I didn't have an issue with the Barbie movie because it's what I expected, right? I've always looked at Barbie as a female empowerment tool. I thought it was a women by women for women. Didn't see an issue with it. It's when they go and they try to monkey with other things where it doesn't belong that it just comes off as disingenuous. And the consumer, I don't think they're going to buy it. I don't think they're going to watch it. I don't think they're going to like it.